For the murders, the castle remained abandoned for 80 years. Just as there are no surviving witnesses to share details about the murders, there was no one to take over the castle Brazilian laws at the time ruled that cousins could not inherit property. So, it remained abandoned for 80 years, occasionally inhabited by unsavory drug addicts like a literal haunted house. Finally, in the 1990s, a local homeless woman named Maria Yulina won a petition to restore the castle. Various restorations happened slowly over the years, and finally the building was declared a historical landmark. In 2017, the state government converted it into the headquarters of the NGO Mothers Club of Brazil, so it's being put to good use helping women who are experiencing homelessness or drug addiction. There were no limits to the castle's grandeur. Inspired by lavish French architecture, the castle was 7,500 square feet of grandeur. There were marble floors, exterior balconies, high ceilings, imported furniture, and carpets from India. Construction took five years, and it was all made possible by the fortune that Dr. Virgilio Cesar Dos Reis earned investing in cinema, which was an up-and-coming technology at the time. De Reis specifically chose Sao Paulo because that's where wealthy and successful entrepreneurs were congregated. When he and his family settled in, the Castellan Hodog U.M. Pat quickly became known as one of the most prominent residences on a past street. There were theories about the murders and why each family member had multiple gunshot wounds. When police tried to reconstruct the crime, they were confident there had been a fight between the two brothers. One had inadvertently shot their mother when she tried to help, but none of the gunshot evidence amounted to a likely story. Their mother Maria had been shot multiple times, which seemed more deliberate than accidental. The brothers had multiple gunshot wounds as well, and the whole scene appeared to have been a domestic argument that transformed into a frenzied attack. There was gun residue in one brother's hands. At the scene of the crime, Armando, the introvert, had gun residue in his hand. This led the coroners to suspect that he was the killer, assuming that he killed himself after he killed his brother and mother. But he was found with multiple gunshot wounds, and that didn't seem consistent with straight-up suicide. Also, the police were pretty convinced the scene was staged, or at least something was awry. Armando was never pinned to the crime. Neither was Alvaro. The sons who inherited the castle were polar opposites. Vigilio Cesar Dos Rai's sons were completely different personalities. Alvaro was an outgoing ice skater, an all-round popular person, and Armando was more of an introvert who sought a practical and traditional life. When their father died in 1937, the brothers couldn't decide about what to do with the castle. Of course, they would never get to make this decision because they were murdered in the castle two months later on May 12. To this day, it's unclear whether this was a murder-suicide or a regular murder case. Evidence of the murder weapons were found at the scene, but no killer. And no clear motive. The family housekeeper heard a strange noise on the eve of the murder. Among the few facts that are actually known about this case, the housekeeper's story is an interesting one. Elsa Lenfelder heard an unusually loud noise coming from the main house and immediately went to investigate. 
She recruited the help from a watchman outside and entered the house to search for the family. To her horror, three people were dead on the floor with fatal gunshot wounds. It appears that Elsa was never a suspect in the murder investigation, though it seems undeniably curious that she was the first person to find them and notify the police. The patriarch of the family died suddenly and left no instructions for his family. When the father of the family, Dr. Das Rice, passed away in March of 1937, he failed to leave instructions for his sons about what to do with his property. It was clear that either Armando or Alvaro would inherit the castle, as their mother would not be entitled to it being a woman in those times. The brothers endured a bitter squabble, since Alvaro wanted to convert the cinema into an ice skating rink and Armando wanted to keep the family business, the cinema going strong. The dead bodies appeared to be staged. When Armando and Alvaro were found dead on the Castellinho floor alongside their mother Maria, something didn't appear normal apart from the dead bodies, which is not a normal occurrence. Some investigators thought the scene was staged because of how awkwardly the bodies were positioned on the floor. They appeared to have been placed there, with each person laying perfectly flat on their back. Another troubling clue that lead investigators down this path was that only one gun was found, but the bullets in the victims were different. This suggested to the police that another person might have been present at the crime scene, though no one was never successfully traced. They were also convinced that another murder weapon was involved, though of course it was never located. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and likes and comments down below and also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care. Bye.